Christians in every walk of life are faced with a decision every day to offer the world biblical truth or a counterfeit, a substitute that will keep people in darkness and in bondage. It's the difference between real love or tolerance. Alex McFarland is a Bible teacher and evangelist who's written on this topic in this month's The Stand magazine. You also know Alex as the co-host of Exploring the Word and founder of Truth for a New Generation and host of the radio program by the same name. Hi, Alex. Welcome to the program. Well, thank you, Jeff. It's always a privilege to converse with you. I appreciate you so much. You've written about the pushback that ministers get when presenting biblical truth to their churches. How have you experienced that personally? Well, we're we're in a battle of worldviews, and for a number of decades, uh, and and I guess this really started in the halls of academia, there have been some of the, the real foundation stones of Western civilization, the foundation of the family, certainly the foundation of American constitutional government, but also, Jeff, the foundations of the the church Mm -hmm. that have really been attacked, demeaned, uh, opposed. The the idea that God exists, the idea that moral truth exists, that truth is objective, not relative. Truth is is absolute, not mere perspective. And, And the idea that people should be held accountable for their actions, that human beings have a moral conscience and we have uh, accountability for how we live and act. You know, these things and and a dozen more that I could name have really been under attack now for decades, Jeff. And so when you've got the church that um, by our assignment from the Lord Jesus, our calling, our assignment— is to proclaim the truth, proclaim God's Word, make disciples. And then when you've got ministers that are faithfully discharging their duties, and they they get in their pulpits and they proclaim what God's Word says about marriage, morality, life, salvation, even economics, education, the stewardship of the mind, good civil government, sometimes not always, but sometimes there's a pushback on the part of parishioners that um, maybe sometimes parishioners, they want um, a nice, kindly parson mm-hmm. to uh, hold their hand as they go into surgery, but not exercise the prophetic ministry of proclaiming truth and calling sinners to repentance. Jeff, I'll say this and I'll throw it back to you, but in, in Matthew 11, verse 12, Jesus said, of, of the kingdom of God. And, and what the gospel is about is about the restoration of all things under the lordship of Jesus, the, the kingdom of God coming in to the realm of earth. Jesus said the kingdom has suffered violence. Uh, and let me say, I think it, it doesn't take a, a lot of thought to recognize throughout history. Um, God uh, God's revelation, the Savior, the people of God, the, the ecclesia, the church, those that stand for virtue, righteousness, and truth. There has been opposition over the centuries, hasn't there been? <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, people want to share the love of Christ, but there's a misunderstanding and a substitution, really, of what the world would want in terms of tolerance. Would you talk about the difference between tolerance and and love from a biblical perspective? Well, that's a great question, Uh, Jeff. um, That that may be the best question I've been asked in many a month, uh, because, you know, the Lord Jesus said that we're to love our neighbor. Now, Augustine, 1,600 years ago, a really, really smart guy. He lived 354 to 430 AD. But Augustine said, love is to seek the highest good of another. In in our day, though, love is just this kind of amorphous, mushy, tolerate anything and everything. But really, if we are to love our neighbor, as Christ said, love our neighbor, we're to seek the highest good of that person, which means the highest good of any human would be that they would know Christ Jesus, that they would be regenerated and reborn by the Spirit of God. And then their their life on earth and their eternity with Christ would be conformed to God's truth. 
That's love. But now tolerance in our day has come to uh, really mean there, there are no boundaries, no standards. You know, if, if you say, well, this is right, that is wrong, they'll say, well, you're being intolerant. But let me just say this, Jeff, the message of Christianity is not, I repeat, not tolerance. Now, um, does God love everybody? Of course. Does the Lord Jesus have his arms open and say, whosoever will may come? Yes, he does. But uh, the very same Jesus who says, whosoever will may come, in Luke 13, 3, Jesus said, if you don't repent from sin, you will perish. Um, it's not a conservative evangelical that came up with that. It was Christ himself. So tolerance says anything goes. Biblical love, though, says I care enough about your soul that I'm going to tell you the truth. I want to talk about some practical ways that believers can be salt and light where they are. And and you're very familiar with media. Let's talk about social media, for example, because a lot of people are on some form of social media, maybe Facebook, for example. So what is the proper way to speak into the culture in that setting without being inflammatory or a sensational? How can we be salt and light, say, for example, on a social media setting in an effective way? Uh, great question. Um, and, and Jeff, you know, because you and I, are, we, we're longtime friends and brothers in the ministry, and I'm being very frank with you uh, and probably saying some things in, in a tone that I, that I wouldn't say when I'm talking to, you know, non-believers. Um, I'm not afraid to, you know, lay the cards on the table and really speak truth. But at the same time, um, studies show that people are very uh, stressed these days. There's a high level of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Jeff, um, I do a lot of work with teenagers, and we we just wrapped up seven youth camps with 1,200 teenagers. Uh, praise God, nearly, uh, well, a little over 150 made a salvation decision wow. this summer, and I give God the glory for that. I'm also exceedingly grateful to American Family Radio and Tim Wildman, who, you know, we, we have 1,200 kids in summer camp because Tim allows me to promote on the various uh, you know, platforms of AFA, but 68% um, of teenagers uh, thereabouts uh, have stress, anxiety, and a fear, a uh, fear they can't even really explain. And so uh, on social media, I try to be very positive. Now, um, there, there's plenty to say, and there, there is a time and a place for correction and reproof, as the, the Bible says, but to a lost world that, uh, Jeff, maybe maybe that people don't believe in Jesus, and maybe people don't even know there's a Jesus to believe in, in our messaging, and, you know, Bert Harper and myself on Exploring the Word, and we've, over the last 15 plus years, we've seen countless numbers of people pray to accept Christ and be born again, even some on live radio. I mean, we've, in 15 years, Easily several dozen times have had people on live radio pray to accept yeah. Christ. We try to speak to the, the common human uh, longings. Can I know that I'm right with God? May I have that security and assurance that whenever I leave this world and I face the Almighty, I am prepared. Um, what about my fears, my, my heartbreak? Um, I, I'm hurting. Does God care? And I think, you know, more than ever, we need to really lead out with the joy. In Christ, we are complete, says Colossians. In Christ, we are forgiven. In Christ, we are secure. In Christ, I understand my context. Um, my journey makes sense. I know where I stand with God. Uh, you know, First John five one, First John five thirteen. We know that our Savior rose from the dead. We know Jesus said in John six forty, uh, "Believe in me, and I, who beat the grave, will raise you up at the last day." And we know Matthew six eight. Our Savior says, "I know what you need even before you ask." So I think that in the church, to a, a world that is absolutely ready for rock-solid truth, we need to set forth those promises, not only that Jesus makes, but the promises that only Jesus can make. 
that's, that's a great reminder, Alex, because a lot of times when we see um, the world the way that it is and the demand for tolerance, we tend to get our defenses up and forget that. Um, but I, I love the way that you brought that out, and that is a great balance to the whole conversation. The name of the article in this month's The Stand magazine is Mistaking Tolerance for Love by our guest, Alex McFarland. Alex, how can people find out more about you and your good work? Oh, well, uh, thanks, brother. Um, you know, uh, my own website, which is alexmcfarland.com, uh, if if I could uh, promote uh, one subset of the page, alexmcfarland.com slash vote. And we wrote a lot of content for first-time voters or for many people with whom we dialogue, Jeff, that have not voted for years and years and years. We think there are a lot of things, vitally important things at stake. So come see me when I'm at a town near you and schedule me and I'd love to come and we'll tailor an event to meet the needs and objectives of your people. But uh, it's an exciting time to be a Christian, isn't it, Jeff? It is an exciting time. Alex, always good to talk with you and and hear about uh, what is on your heart and how you are so effectively addressing the culture. I'd also mention that you can follow Alex and Bert Harper on the Exploring the Word Facebook page, which now has almost 10,000 followers. So check that out, uh, Exploring the Word on Facebook. Alex, good to talk with you. Take care. We look forward to being with you again soon. God bless you, brother. Thank you.